So I just want to, you know, everybody to kind of just look at this picture at the start. And, you know, just take a, a mental note of what you see in this image. And uh, we'll come back to it later at the end of the slides. So a little bit about my family and I. I'm the, the dude in the middle. Um, this is my brother on the, the left of me, my sister, my mom, and my dad. And um, just to zoom in on the, uh, the figureheads of my family, so to speak. Uh, this is my mom, and um, my mom and I has always had a very uh, strained relationship growing up. You know, I've had a, a lot of issues that I've had with her personally, and uh, a lot of arguments, and there was just a lot of like friction and discomfort between me and my mom. And as I was going through my pictures to use for this slide and you know, to share with everybody, I realized that actually this is the only picture that I've had with my mom when it's just me and my mom past, when I was past the age of like 13. This is the only picture I could find because I just never really wanted to, you know, take a lot of pictures with my mom. So, and Throughout the course of the journey, I, my mindset kind of changed, which will be going back to that towards the end. And this here is my dad. Um, my dad did his best to raise me as his son, you know, even with his own issues and problems with work, he, he's still there with me. And I remember an important lesson that he taught me last time when I was younger, which kind of shaped my perspective on a lot of things, which was that men don't cry and men are strong. And with that ingrained in me, I kind of took that as my whole perspective on who I wanted to be and that I felt that I would not share my issues with him because I was strong and I did not want to burden him with my problems, even though he had his own problems in work. And a little background on my dad. Uh, if you do a good, quick Google search of him, you can easily find him. Um, he's the three gentlemen on the left. I have no idea who the two on the right are. Um, I've always felt like I tried my best with my dad, but I always felt that I was less than him and that I would never be able to achieve like even an ounce of what he has achieved and that I felt that I was never going to make him proud of me and that I was just a burden to him. Although... I never spoke with him about any of my problems or any of my issues because of that one perspective he made me think about when I was younger, that men don't cry and men are strong. And a little, that has kind of shaped how I viewed a lot of things in life, which was a perspective that was very difficult for me to change. And in the next slide, I would just like to talk about home or what I thought was a home. Because there's a little bit of background of me that uh, Prof. NG has already mentioned. I lived in four countries growing up. I've stayed in 10 houses over the course of my 22 years. And I was always known as uh, the student that either transferred out of the school or transferred into the school. You know, I never had any childhood friends. I never had a place that I could call home. I was always displaced. And I never understood how to talk about it with anybody because I could not open up. I could not share my feelings. And, you know, this lack of em an emotional outlet eventually led to a lot of self-hate. You know, I really resented myself because I felt like I was a disappointment and I never fit in with anybody, an outcast, so to speak. And that also led to a lot of suicidal thoughts and a lot of anger that I had in myself. But the one key fact about me was that I never wanted anybody to pity me. I never wanted anybody to feel sorry for me. And the only way I could seem strong or seem like the world did not affect me was I thought that if I would laugh and to joke, I would seem strong. And if you ask most people that know me, um, the most of them would say, oh, Ethan's a, he's a very fun guy. He's always joking around, you know, he's always cracking a joke. And that was my way of putting on a strong image. I felt that by laughing outwardly it would somehow translate to my own personal happiness because if i'm laughing that means i'm happy right 
and that somehow by fooling, fooling the rest of the world, I will somehow be able to fool myself. That by somehow acting happy, I would think that I am. And that unfortunately did not really work, as many of you can you know, attest to that. Um, so because of that, I always looked for somewhere I could call my home because I did not know what that meant. And so these are the friends that I've made while I was in Thailand studying over my course of the years. And I always felt out of place that I was never really able to relate to a lot of the people here and a lot of my peers. And I always tried my best to fit in by faking a smile, being approachable, cracking a joke, but I always felt empty. And a big regret that I had was that I was never able to show my true feelings with my friends because I always wanted to be seen as strong. I never wanted to share. And I entered the school with a lot of anger with my, towards my dad because I was uprooted in secondary three in Singapore and just tossed into an entirely different environment, meeting entirely different people having to go through the four years there with no friends to show for it at the end of it. And I had a lot of anger towards my father, but I never spoke to him about it. I just kept it in. And when I decided, when fast forward four years and I entered army, I, I went in wanting to become like an officer as most Singaporean males do. But I wanted to be an officer because my father was an officer. And I did not want to let him down because I felt that as his son, I should be able to achieve what he has achieved. And, but as you can see from the picture on the right, those who have served the army will know that I did not make it to become an officer. I was only a sergeant. And I, uh, that affected me a lot because I felt that I let my own dad down and that I was just a failure in his eyes because I didn't achieve what he thought, I thought he wanted me to achieve. And I, as the same thing goes, I try my best to fit in with all my platoon mates. But those years that I spent out of Singapore kind of had a disconnect and I could not really relate to them. And my regret was that I was always a bit distant to a lot of them. And even though I'm smiling and laughing, I always felt alone. And that was when I realized that actually I needed to make a change. So... I needed to actually realize that holding on to all this past and all this regret is just going to injure me later on in life. I'm never going to be able to make proper friendships. I'm never going to be able to forge real relationships with anybody if I just keep pretending to be okay. If I just keep pretending to smile and laugh at the world. So fast forward to NUS. I decided that for the first time in a long time, I'm going to be genuine with myself. I'm going to actually try to talk to people. But that was when I hit the barrier of I did not know how to do it. I spent so long trying to pretend to be strong that I did not know how to open up anymore. And it was only through uh, the mindfulness course that I sat through with Prof. NG when I realized that I needed to have a change in, perce in perspective, that being strong and being a man doesn't necessarily mean that you can't speak about your problems. And once I could slowly overcome that, I could actually forge friendships. And safe to say I did for the most part. And I'm very thankful to be able to have a lot of friends that are actually real for nowadays and genuine. And that was when I realized that, okay, so I sorted out that bit of my life where I felt that I was faking it to my friends. But now... I was also faking it to my family because my mom and dad always thought that I was fine because I never shared my issues with them. I never shared my problems with them. I just kept quiet and out of sight and out of mind. And because of that, I decided to slowly make the process of healing with my mom and dad. And so I decided to work on my family because I realized looking through all the pictures going through for these slides was that they were always there with me throughout everything. Throughout the years growing up, they were always there. But I was always pretending to be fine and okay to my own parents. And I decided to start off by patching things up with my mom. Now, my mom and I never saw eye to eye because 
she was always a bit distant to me because of her own upbringing as well. And that led to her treating me how she was treated growing up. And I was very distant to her. And a lot of, there was a lot of anger, a lot of shouting, you know, vulgarities were used very often. And I just shut it off. I just buried it in the past and did not think of it at all. I held a lot of grudges, a lot of pain and a lot of hate towards my own mom. And these grudges actually reminded me of a quote that uh, Prof. NG once said to me, was that holding a grudge is like holding hot coal in your own hands and wishing that the other person burns. Because at the end of the day, I was only hurting myself by holding on to all these grudges I had with my mom and that I would never be able to call her my mother if I had all this pain and rage towards her. So I decided to, you know, confront her about it. And you never really realize how important it is to you when someone says sorry. You know, it's just, a, it can be a fleeting thought in your head. You can go, oh, he says sorry, but he doesn't really mean it. But when someone has hurt you and they actually apologize for it, it actually means a lot. And I only realized that when I opened up to my mom and that she did not actually know that a lot of things she did was hurting me in the way because I never spoke it to her. And that put a lot of strain on our relationships because of all the past and it, it was never clear. Every argument would just bring up something that happened three weeks ago, one month ago. And being able to sit down and talk to her and say, mom, when you say this, this is how I feel. And, you know, I don't think this is right. And we can talk it through like adults. That really helped slowly patch up things with my mom. And I'm very thankful for, for mindfulness to be able to, show, to help me with that. And for my dad, I realized that keeping quiet actually does a lot more damage than you might think. Because a lot of the issues that I had with my own father was because I felt that he did not see me as the son that he always wanted to have, that I was always a burden and a let down to him because I never achieved the things that he achieved. And all of these were actually just assumptions in my own mind. I conjured them, I conjured them up in my head. They didn't actually exist. My dad never thought about that. And I never knew that for the longest time because I never wanted to share my emotions with him. I never wanted to open up. And that once I talked to him about it, he was quite taken aback because he never knew. And uh, we had a good heart-to-heart -heart talk and then we sorted out everything and realized that, yeah, he's always going to be proud of me because he's my dad. And he knows for a fact that I've tried my best in a lot of things that even though I've never managed to reach what he has, you know, he still sees me as his son and he's still proud of me. And now looking back at this picture, Many of you may have seen it as a man in the dark holding a shovel. Is he digging a hole? Is he burying a hole? For the longest time, I always saw myself in that picture that I was just burying the past, burying all my hate, my anger, my resentment, everything just thrown into the recesses of my own mind. Because if it was out of sight, I don't think of it and it's probably not going to hurt me. But when things get tough, it always comes back up. And the self-destructive nature always hurt me time and time again. And due to mindfulness, it allowed me to realize that actually maybe he's not burying the past. Maybe he's unearthing it and actually confronting it so he can move forward. That change in perspective only came from when I sat down and really reflected on all my actions. But I'd be lying if I said to you, going through that 13-week course somehow changed me and I'm entirely a better person now than I was 13 weeks before, because there are still times when I leave the shower and I catch myself in the mirror and I just go, man, I don't really like you. Or I lie down in bed and have the same thoughts of just ending it all. But being able to understand that I can share and talk about these emotions with people actually saved me later on in life because I'll be able to open up and actually talk and have an outlet for it. The main perspective that I had growing up was that men don't cry and men are strong. Because of that, 
I never wanted anybody to see me as weak in the event that I opened up to them. That change was very difficult for me to come by. And if it's one thing that those are listening can take into account is that it's actually okay for us to feel and for us to have this pain and hurt. It's okay for men to have feelings and emotions and cry because we are all human, right? And having that perspective change now is, it means a lot to me doing this mindfulness course because I never knew that beforehand. I always kept everything in until I imploded on myself. And being able to have an outlet to share and talk about it meant a lot to me. And doing this mindfulness journey, I finally accepted that all these mistakes that I've done in my past and all this anger could not be held within me anymore. I had to open it up and talk to people about it because it was not healthy and it was self-destructive. I was not moving forward if I was just burying things in the past. And because of that, I was finally able to share and talk and patch up relationships with my parents and my friends. And because of that, I'm very thankful to the mindfulness. So uh, with that, I'd like to just thank everybody for listening to my first talk.